So in this match masterclass, I am demonstrating a rig that is so effective, it's actually banned at some fisheries across the country. So this is not gonna be one to miss. And I've got one already. <laughs> that, uh, I said it was pretty good. I didn't even get a chance to show you how the float works. So then what am I on about? About a rig that is so good, in certain places it is banned. Let's get it out there straight away. It's not banned everywhere, but there is venues that don't allow this. So you need to check the rules first, but they've got the rig right here in my hands. and. To look at it, it is a very conventional standard pole rig, but this rig is overshotted. And what I mean by that, if you're unfamiliar with the term, the weight that I've got incorporated into my rig is too heavy for the float I'm using, which pretty much renders the float useless, but everywhere pretty much has a rule now that you have to have a float on your rig. So that just gets around a few rules. And it does actually slow the fall of my bait. I'm gonna get way more technical with that in, uh, later on in the video. So we are all about overshotting today. I've done a video about three months ago now on the Jigger float. And between the Jigger float and this rig here, I personally think 98% of my shallow fishing is all done like this now. Fishing conventionally with a little float, trying to see your bites, I think it's done. And I'm hopefully gonna prove that today. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna get way more technical in the information throughout this video. But if there's anything that I say that you don't understand or you want a bit more information on, then drop me a message and I'll answer them personally. And hopefully I can put a bit more clarity into it. But what I'm gonna do is just gonna get the swim going now. I'm gonna fish for five or 10 minutes get a few fish there and then we're going to talk to you about exactly what overshotting is, what it means, how you fish it and why it's so much better than the conventional way of shallow fishing. There's been many people have done videos on overshotting and everyone has their own little way of doing it. So I'm just going to talk you through my personal way of doing it and how I've sort of settled on now that the way I like to fish this rig. So let me get the swim going and we'll come back to you in five or 10 minutes when there's a few fish to catch and we can talk you through the method. So the good news is there's plenty of fish there and we're going to be able to show you this devastating method. So I guess let's start off with the rig. And although this is all about the rig and overshotting, that's not really the important bit, I guess. It's about how you fish it because there's a lot more than just hanging it there and letting the fish hook themselves. Yes, that will happen. And that's where some people say that it takes a skill out of it because they just hook themselves. But there is so much to do to make it better, which I'm gonna talk through. But let's get the rig out of the way. So I've got it for a short top kit, the elastic, and that's the orange slick. A short top kit is very important for fishing in this style, because you need a lot of control, which we'll explain a bit more as we go through the session. But the rig itself is a conventional shallow rig by, you know, by the looks of it. I've actually got one, let me reach over here. I've actually got another one here. So this rig here is a genuine shallow rig and this one next to it is the overshotted rig. So if you were looking at those on the top kit, you would have no idea that someone was actually fishing overshotted, but trust me, they'd be battering you up by the next peg because it's so much better. But the rig itself, I've got 014 mainline. Again, you just need to balance that between 
uh, the size of the fish you're fishing for. This is a mixed fishery, F1s, Ide and Carp. Really cute, really clever fish, and this is why this is very good. So the float is actually quite relevant, but I do just use a dibber float because it's nice and small. And like I said, some venues, they do insist that you have to have a float on your rig. If not, it's a no shot rig, which it fishes pretty much the same with one additional extra. But here's a good tip for you. Take a look at the top of my float. The eye, I have not actually used. So if I want to, if the venue allows, you can turn it into, there you go, a no float rig within absolute seconds because all I'm doing is putting those rubbers on the stem and that is good enough to keep that on there. Like I said, the float pretty much is irrelevant. It just keeps within most venue rules. And then underneath there is where I've got the overshotting. So it's all in a bulk just above my hook link and that is two number eight overshotted on the rig to a four inch hook link. And why two number eights, I hear you ask me. I'm gonna demonstrate it just here on a top kit. So one thing that the float does do, and this is different to the no shot rig, no float rig, sorry, is it does create a little bit of a parachute. So as I just lower it in down here, obviously it's overshot, it's just gonna sink, but the float does slow it down a little bit. Now I'm not sure how much you're gonna actually physically see, but for me watching it, and it's a good way to practice how quick to lower your rig, because when you get fishing, this is important, so I lower my pole at the rate that my float is sinking. And for me, what works best is just two number eights. And I've just got used to lowering my pole at that rate. I think when it when overshot and first come out, there was like, I think it started off with a BB, massively overshot, I didn't just hang it there and the fish grab it. That works. Then it went to a real soft, like overshot and by just a number 10 and now this is how I have finalized that I like it. Like I said, everyone's very different. Some people will overshot it more, some people will overshot it less, but just get used to the way that your float is a little bit of a parachute and how that creates on your rig. So let's get into the fishing. Now I'm fishing 13 meters, I've just shipped out and I'm gonna just put a bit of bait because I've been talking to you there. So I'm just gonna fire a few maggots in and I've got one already. <laughs> that, uh, I said it was pretty good. I didn't even get a chance to show you how the float works, but I'll talk you through it again. We're gonna catch loads today. So we're gonna be able to show you properly. Nice eyed this one, one of my favorite fish in the world. But that is how ridiculous this rig is because it is just, as long as you keep your line tight, that's the main thing. They're cool, aren't they? Cool fish. As long as you keep your line tight, you are going to catch them. Now, I've got two keep nets here. I'm not putting these fish in the net at the moment. I'm setting them free because later in this video, we're going to have a little half hour match of this overshotted rig versus a standard conventional sort of how a float normally would be shot and, and the float actually doing what a float should do. So a couple of maggots on there again. This is very rhythmic fish in this. If you can get into a nice rhythm, you can catch an awful lot of fish. So let's feed some bait and let's get out there again. So the way I fish this is when I get out to my spot, I slap my rig over once and then I let the bait fall at the rate that those two number eight sink. And I just lower my top kit at that rate. Like I said, you're not looking for your float because your float's under the water, it's irrelevant. When I get to my tip on the water like it is now, we do a few taps and we jig it up. And then we lower it again and we've got one. That is how good it is. Now, what you need to do and what you need to practice with is you need to lower your bait at the rate that your float or your, your hook bait is sinking if you've got no float on there at all. Because what you can't have is slack line. If you have slack line, this rig is completely pointless because the fish do hook themselves. And if they can grab your bait swim a couple of inches and not feel any connection to your actual pole tip, then you're gonna grab it, spit it, and chuck it out again. Apologies for that train if that's a bit, a bit loisy, but what have we got on here? So yeah, the main thing is, is when you're fishing it, is keep that line tight. As I said, any slack line pretty much renders this fish useless, the, this rig useless. This time we've got an F1. There's an Ide and an F1, and he, Wow, really wants it. Let's get the disgorger on this one. 
that one was not hanging about. Right, again, not going in the keep net, we're just going to go over the net and we're going to slip him back. Let's repeat that again to show you how we're doing it. So all you need to do is basically keep doing exactly the same thing. Now this does work better if your venue is very well stocked. The only thing I would say with a no float rig, you can't see the bites. So if you are at a venue or you've not used it before, when I first started using this rig, a couple of times I thought, how is everyone catching more? And they were doing this and because I hadn't used it before, I had no confidence. You can't see any bites until your elastic comes out. It, it was just hard. So what I would say is to get used to the no float rig working or what depth they're feeding. I always start on the conventional rig. As soon as I start getting bites, I put this rig exactly the same depth and then I fish it like I am now. So we lower down to the float, a couple of taps, lower down to the tip. Oh, one grab there. And all you're doing is like just creating a lot of movement in the bait. Slap the rig over, tap your pole, little flick up. Lower it down at the size, right at those number eights, and we've got one. And there we go. That is how I do it. Like I said, everyone's a little bit different, but for me, number eights are the key. Two number eights is the perfect sort of rate of sink for me, my hook bait. Look at that, a tiny little one. <laughs> it does catch some really, really cool fish. Like, certainly with um, F1s, I'd, they're the ones that are notoriously hard to hook when you're fishing a conventional rig. You know, your float goes under and before you know it, your floats come up, you're struck, you missed your bite. And that's why this is so much better because you don't miss any bites. So before we go out there, we feed some bait. Now I'm feeding a mixture of bait, which we're gonna have a, we'll go through bait in a moment because it is different to venue, but there's a couple that I really, really like and we're gonna ship back out there. Hopefully they're waiting for us. Like I said, the float is nothing. So we're gonna slap over. We're gonna lower the rig at the pace of those two number eights overshotted. If we get to the end of the rig, the pole touches the water, we tap it, we jig it up a little tiny bit, only like six inches, we tap it and we do it again. And this is why I use the conventional rig so you can see your float to work out what depth these fish are. Because if you were just doing this, if you were just tapping here now and your pole wasn't getting dragged around, your elastic wasn't coming out, you'd be absolutely clueless if there was any fish there because there's nothing to give you indications that there's fish actually there. There's no float to read, there's no bites to see and te you know they could be sitting at three foot deep well you doing this at what am i fishing now about a foot and a half you're not going to catch them but by just finding where they are with a conventional rig switching over to this one you're going to catch an awful lot of fish this one's taken a little bit longer and if it does take a little bit longer all i do is just pause hang the rig there it doesn't matter because it's like i said it's overshot so it's all nice and tight at any point my cold could now just literally be dragged around and I've got a fish. But I can feed a little bit of bait. And this is where people did say that the skills take out because initially you just sit here like I am now. You'd be sitting here and waiting for that elastic to come out. But another train. I do think, there you go, that was on the slap. I do think working it makes a big, big difference. That time I just slapped it in, the line's nice and tight and the elastic just comes out. It is absolutely deadly. I hope I explained it there in enough detail. Let's uh, get this one in, another F1. Like I said, notoriously difficult to catch and we may be able to prove later when we have the little match against the other rig, just how difficult these little fellas can be. Very, very tricky feeding fish, but big, big weight builders. So. That is a little section of how I fish you. We're going to go on to a bit more in shortly, but what I'm going to do is catch three or four more, and then we'll perhaps have a look at some of the baits, because like I said, today we're fishing two different baits, and for me, they just work the best.
between this and the jigger float, I just have completely fell in love with this style of fishing. And there is still a place for conventional neat and tidy rigs. But for me, like I said, 98% of my fishing is one of those two rigs now. But I'll take a short break just to talk you through the baits that we're using today. It really doesn't get any more simple. Two that I absolutely love. Got a big old pot of them here. Maggots, red maggots, they sink nice and slow. They catch absolutely everything. Like I said, because we're fishing for Eid, F1, carp, that is a big, big plus for me. But because we there's quite a lot of roach near as well, the one bait I do like to mix in, if I stop tipping them everywhere, is F1 sweet pellets from Dynamite. I use these in the jigger float I keep going on about. That same video, these pellets, when I'm fishing shallow, are my absolute number one because they've got this this sort of flavoured coating, this yellow coating, and I've said it before, if you drop them into a glass of water, that coating comes off so quickly, it leaves a bit of a haze around where you're fishing. And I don't know, just they just work so well for when I'm fishing. So baits are so simple for this, but anything really that, that works for fishing shallow, you know, casters are very good, pellets, maggots, they're the baits, meat, it will really work with anything but for today's session and the venues that I like to fish, those are the two that I go for. So I'm gonna go double red maggot, I just fed a few pellets. Let's try and catch one more before we go on to that little match that I was on about to show you how much better this can be than conventional neat and tidy shallow rigs. Let's hope it doesn't let me down, but slap it in, lower it at the pace of that overshotted rig, if you get to your top kit, you don't always do. A few taps and we jig it up and we just repeat that process. I know it's quite, you know, it probably sounds quite repetitive, but there we go, we've got one. But that is what you need to do. You need to keep that bait working. You need to keep it moving. And you're gonna keep putting fish in your net. And I said, I've got, I don't know how long ago it was I started fishing this, but a few years ago, whenever it was, like, it's just amazing. and people if they're doing it either side of you you sort of pulling your hair out why can i not beat them then you switch to this you're suddenly uh outperform them oh there we go <laughs> lost it outperform them quite regularly but that doesn't matter that fish is lost what i will do is we will put this rig just on the top kit and we're going to go in and have a look at that match that I was on about. So what I've got is I've got two keep nets in here. My left hand keep net, what should we start on? Let's start on, I mean, let's just let's just carry on. We've been fishing the overshotted rig. Let's start on that. So let me get my phone out and we will have a half an hour fishing session on this. What is it? So it's quarter to one. So at quarter past one, we're gonna stop fishing this method. We're gonna have a little way in and we're going to see what we weigh and then as i showed you earlier the rig i've got behind me just here that's a nicely shotted shallow rig how you would fish conventionally there is a place for it don't get me wrong certainly as it gets a bit colder that may come into my fishing a bit more but i think this is gonna be a surprise i've actually never done this experiment so um i don't know how well it's gonna be but yeah half an hour fishing this slap it in lower at the pace and then we will see the difference and hopefully it's going to show we got on hopefully it's going to show us all how much better it is i mean if it doesn't then this whole video has been a lie to you hasn't it but i'm pretty confident that we're going to have a bigger weight on this than we are fishing a conventional float where you have to strike at the bites and i will talk you through how i'm doing that when we get round to it but let me get my head down let me catch as many as I can on this for 30 minutes. Like I said, the clock, the clock is on. Quarter past one, we're gonna stop. And then we'll weigh them in. So there's the first fish, a lovely little F1. We'll get him in the left hand keep net and we'll get cracking.
Well, I'm probably gonna have to double check. Yes, this is gonna be the last fish. I've got under a minute, so we will take this as the last one, and then we will do a little weigh-in to see what I weighed in in half an hour on an overshotted rig, and then we'll compare it. It was been, oh, missed it. It's been okay. I got in one, <laughs> I got in one little tangle that cost me probably two minutes, but that's general fishing. So I can't sort of say that that might not happen on the other rig, but there we go. A final F1 to finish on. We've had a little mixture, we've had a little carp, some I, some F1. So that's going in the keep net. Let's get a weigh-in done and see what we had on the overshot I'd read. Right, let's have a look. Oh, as well, you know you took the mick out of my shoes. I got some new boots. <laughs> you bullied me last time and said they're not fishing shoes. So I got some new ones. Right, let's have a look. Not bad for 30 minutes, is it? Let's see. Right, what do you reckon? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. Well, that says 30 pounds and four ounces. Can you come and have a look to make sure that I'm not lying? Don't know if you'll see it on camera. 30 pounds point four two. Yeah? Yeah, there you go. Can you see it? Do that nice. 30 pound point four two beat in the first half hour. That was the overshotted rig. Oh, the wet lens. <laughs> so that was a pretty good target, I feel, but I've picked up now what we would say is a conventional shallow rig. As I said, exactly the same as the other one, apart from it's not overshotted. So these shots just spaced out just here. It's exactly the same depth, but the float actually sits on the surface of the fish in a normal way. A nice, neat, shallow rig, let's say. And we know what weight. We've got to try and beat to see if an overshotted rig is indeed that much better. I believe it is, but let's hope I'm not made to look rather stupid and this beats it. Now there's absolutely loads of fish here. What have we done now? We've done 30 pound there. So we've done pretty much a pound a minute on that rig. But um, yeah, we're, we're obviously clearly gonna catch fish on this rig because there's so many there. We're gonna fish in the same way. We're gonna slap it in, but we're gonna be striking it by it. So we're waiting for the float to go under and we're gonna try and hook them up. Wait, that one hooked itself as a slap bit, but we'll see how quick this one is. I think it's gonna be slower just because I don't know if you quite saw it on camera. I already missed two bites then. And that's the difference with the overshot him, is you don't actually miss bites on the overshot. So there we are, a nice eyed. I love eyed, they're absolutely wicked. Let's get that in the net. I'm gonna catch one more, and then I'm gonna really get my head down. Just check the time, so I know where we are. That was 32 when I started. So two minutes past is when we are gonna stop fishing on this method. So to keep it as fair as I can, I'm doing exactly what I was. I'm feeding before I go out. I'm then shipping out to the spot. I'm gonna slap the rig in just because that noise definitely does make a difference. But you may be able to see these fish are so quick. Like you get way in another one. This is gonna be close. You know? There's so many, ah, it's come off. Adam in a tangle, right. That is exactly what happened in the other rig. So it's not like it's unfair. And here you go, look. It's only a little bit tangled, but you might be able to see. Look at that, it's really frapped up. But on the hook, a scale. That is because I had to strike into it rather than it hooking itself. So that is one of the dangers of fishing this particular way. You see the float go under and you strike and you sometimes do foul hook them with the other method because you're not doing that. You're not wasting time. In this little section I've been talking to you here, I don't know how long we just wasted there. You know, that, that's probably not happening on overshotted rig and that's why I think it's so much better. Bite and missed it. 
and all this is just it's time wasted that you just don't get on the other rig another bite and missed it they, they are God, they are really quick fish we've picked these fish Ide and F1s purposefully because they are the hardest ones to catch shallow they're really quick they're really clever so that is why we picked it and this one is another nice eye two eyed on this little rig no f1s at the moment but check this out for a fish <laughs> that's wicked isn't it perfect so let's get in the net let's crack on for half an hour and see how close we get or if indeed we may go past it but we will see how well this rig does So that is my half an hour up on this rig, but it's going to try and catch one more because I'm out there. And it, if it's done anything, it's made me realize why I don't fish this rig anymore unless I have to. I either solely fish the jigger, jigger float or overshot and oh, I've lost it. That's it. It's just, I, I'm hitting like one in three one in four bites maybe i've lost fish it's just so frustrating and not it's not saying you can see there i've just had two bites three it's not and i've lost it <laughs> it's not saying you won't catch them but honestly i i think i'm going to be amazed here in how much less this is than the overshotted rig and yeah it really has solidified it's been a long while since i've fished one of those if rules dictate you have to have a float that's not overshotted then you have to fish a rig like this and you probably if you fish the five hour match you might be able to to make it a little bit better mess around with shine pattern hook size stuff like that but it's night and day for me i am gonna get that net weighed in and we'll have an official difference between an overshotted and a standard rig i've never done it before so i don't know what to expect but i know that was pretty frustrating What are you saying is 50. 50 is a bit more than that so on the standard rig you can come around again to show 21 pound and six ounces nearly seven ounces so what we're saying a difference there of roughly nine pound that's in half an hour there's so you think over a five hour match you can pretty much times that by 10 we've already used one so 80 if it carried on that range you're talking about about an 80 pound difference in a five hour match so if you're wondering why some people are smashing you up from the next peg they could be doing that so there we go that's it i guess that little test at the end there was the perfect test for it. I've never done that. It surprised me myself. If you're increasing your catch rate by nine pounds and in a half an hour period, I mean, it's not always going to be like that, but it's pretty much as fair as I can make it. It's the same rig, it's the same shot, it's the same line, it's everything. The only difference is this rig, the overshotted rig, has two extra number eights. Two number eights has made that difference. If we were fish, for five hours we're talking about an 80 pound difference because of two number eight shot that is crazy blow my mind but i knew it was that much better just because like i said solely for the last couple of years i've genuinely not fished a conventional shallow rig unless rules tell me i have to so give it a go at your venue if you've not try it out the way i fish it see if it works for you like i said you might want to overshot it more you might want to overshot it less just find what works for you because it is unbelievable and let me know how you get on please do double check the rules 
if you're not allowed to use a no float rig, where there's no float at all, the little overshot can get around it, but some venues do not allow overshotting as well. So it's worth checking. I don't really know why they ban it. I think whether the fish is hooking itself or you're striking into them, you're still putting a hook into that fish. So for me, I wish they'd use it everywhere because it is just so much better. But I hope you've enjoyed it. Take what you can from it. Let me know how you get on and we'll be back very soon with another Match Masterclass.